Hi everybody, my name is Lewis. I've worked here at Gazelle Sports in Grand Rapids for five years. I've been teaching this class, Good Form Running, for about four of them. Some of you might have seen me around. Uh, I also run for Gazelle Elite, the team that Gazelle Sports and Hoka sponsor. So Good Form Running is one of my passions. I do my best to practice it on a daily basis, but I want you to know before we get into things, we don't expect you to have mastered any of this. We expect you to come in as a blank slate, and I'm excited to talk to you today about the four points of good form running. All right, if you're watching this, feel free to do whatever you need to do to get comfortable with the class. Preferably, you're up on your feet, but if that feels weird, that's okay too. Point number one is posture. This is the, one of the most important points because we build everything on posture. So if you're standing up, I want you to, without changing anything, just look down at your feet and take note of what angles they're kind of pointing at. Most people aren't exactly where they need to be, all right? So if you look down, your feet should be parallel. They should be facing towards the screen that you're watching this on, and they should be about uh, hip width apart, and that just means two fists together like this, all right? Put your two fists together, that's the gap between the, your feet. Moving on up, we wanna make sure that your weight is evenly distributed across your, across your feet. A lot of people kind of lean back on their heels or maybe lean forward a little bit on their toes. I want you to think about being as flat-footed as you possibly can. Moving on up to your knees, your knees should be what we call soft. If you lock them, you should feel your quads tighten up, your butt cheeks kind of tighten up, and that's putting all this pressure on your muscular system rather than your skeletal system. Soft knees, just a little bit bent is how we want them. Moving on up, most people, especially if you are prone to working at a desk job, will kind of stoop over like this. Your shoulders will roll forward. It crunches your core, it condenses your lung uh, cavity like this. If all you can do is just tighten your butt cheeks a little bit and you can rotate your pelvis back, it'll pull everything back up and straighten you back up again, okay? Moving on up even higher, we like to think about our shoulders. And if you're still kind of crunched forward like this, even though your spine is fairly straight, I want you to roll your shoulders up as tightly as you can to your ears and then drop them back down. You should feel your chest puff out, your shoulders roll back, and now there should be a good gap between your earlobes and the rest of your, and your shoulders. Your head should also be directly above your spine. Don't stoop forward like this. For every pound or every inch forward that your neck is over, or your head is over the rest of your spine, that's like 13 pounds of pressure when you're running and clunking your entire body weight into each foot. All right. Posture, we can align this entire thing in one move. We call it the reset position. The reset position is just this. All we're gonna do is look down at your feet, make sure they're parallel, evenly distributed, knees are soft, and then you're gonna reach up as high as you can, and then slowly just drop your arms back to the side. And that'll just align everything up into the exact posture that we want for point one. Point number two, everybody, is midfoot. Now, midfoot is not a, a scientific term. You won't find it in any anatomy textbook or anything. It's just the, it's essentially, let me use this. It's just the gap between the tippy toes and your heel. It's the middle of your foot. That's all the midfoot is. We talk about midfoot because it's exactly the part of your foot that you want to land on when you're running. So the reason that we want to land on the midfoot rather than the heel, which a lot of runners are prone to doing, is that the heel is just one bone. It's just one spherical bone right at the back. And when you're putting all of your body weight into that heel bone, you can feel that kind of reverberate up the rest of your kinetic chain like that, all right? So the, your midfoot is comprised of, up, I think it's 26 bones, all kind of designed to manipulate the ground underneath and support the impact, and they flex underneath you. It's the, it's the organic uh, way that we were essentially designed to run. So we like to demonstrate this, again, up on your feet, like this. We're gonna reset our posture because we need to practice this. You can do this anytime. I always encourage people to do this even when they're, you know, washing dishes in the middle of that or if they're, you know, at their desk and they need to just stand up for a bit, reset the posture. If you're in the middle of a run and you stop at like a traffic light or something, just drill that into your body to stay upright on soft knees because this is all important. It's gonna come into play later. Okay, if we all march in place just like this, you'll start to notice exactly where your feet are prone to landing. No one organically marches on their heels. You can see probably how my entire body is kind of shaking with that, right? If you land on midfoot, it's the much softer way of landing. And it's also the, the, the midfoot is where you take off from as well. So you land on your midfoot, you push off on your midfoot every single time when you're marching. When we're in motion, that's the exact same thing that we want to do. We're essentially just marching forward 
with a bit of a float phase. That's all running is, it's super simple. Okay, so once we've got that midfoot, here's the piece that I really wanna hammer home with you guys, is that not only are we trying to land on midfoot, but we're trying to make sure that we land underneath our center of gravity on a bent knee, okay? And midfoot is kind of the way that we do that and is the best way to think about how you're gonna land. Your center of gravity is technically like an inch behind your belly button, so it's about here. If you work your way down, we want the middle of your foot, when it hits the ground, to line up right with that, not out in front of you. If we're landing out in front of us like this, it's more of a braking motion, okay? And since we're moving forward, we don't want to put on the brakes. We want to accelerate only. Moving forward, we'll move on to point three, cadence. Point number three is cadence, and it's perhaps the most complicated point, but it's the way that it kind of wraps everything together a little bit for us. Cadence is the way that we help ourselves to land on our midfoot. It's the healthiest way to run, okay? Cadence, technically, is just the number of steps that you're taking every minute. Most people will kind of take between 140 and 160 steps a minute. People with shorter legs are more likely to take more steps a minute, and people with longer legs like me are more likely to take fewer steps a minute and have more of like a bounding motion. They've done studies and they've realized that the ideal number of steps to take per minute is between 175 and 185. These are just numbers that I'm just throwing at you at the moment. So what I would encourage you to do is to get one of like the millions of free metronome apps available online. Um, or if you have a, met a lot of people have metronomes built into their, their running watches. If you can get a metronome and you can become more familiar with those numbers, it essentially just in involves about three steps a second. It seems really, really high, but let me pitch it to you this way. All right, so for context, 150, the lower end of that cadence spectrum that we talked about sounds like this. And I'm gonna get you guys again to stand up, do the posture reset like we talked about, and then we're gonna march in place to this beat. So this is 150 beats a minute. It seems pretty slow when you're out there. This is where most people are, okay? I'm gonna slowly tick this up until we hit that ideal 180. Here's 160. A little quicker, right? You'll start to feel yourself kind of getting up on your calves a little bit more. Here we go, 175. Okay, now you can see there's a bit more of like a float phase. I've started like actually getting up off of my feet a little bit. It's much harder to kind of just actually march in place. And here's our ideal 180. Okay, perfect. Hopefully you guys can hear this okay. So this can seem really, really fast. All of a sudden we're taking three steps a second. It seems fast, but the trick to, to, to cadence that you need to remember is that cadence and your speed are two completely separate things. I could put anyone on a treadmill and say, and hold a metronome to their ear and say, run to this, and you'll still be going that exact same pace, right? You'll still be going 10 minute mile pace or whatever it is, but just taking less steps to do it. If I bumped you up to 180, kept you at the exact same pace, you're still running the exact same speed, right? Same speed, you're now just taking more steps a minute. So your cadence is your cadence no matter the speed. That's the trick to remember. The reason that we highlight cadence at all is because the more steps that you can take a minute, the more likely you are to land underneath your center of gravity, on a flat foot, on a bent knee. So now when we're running, the only motion should be behind us. It's not in front of us. So there's none of that braking motion that we talked about. Hopefully you guys can see this. There's no motion out in front of like this, so we're not throwing on the brakes. It's landing right underneath us and the only motion is behind us, pushing back like this. Now, I like to compare it to this. I have, I have a dog in Australia and I have a dog here in America. Back home in Australia, my dog is like 15 years old, very, very old, very, very slow now. When I take him out for a run, I'm running, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 minute mile pace. I'm taking the same number of steps. My cadence is my cadence no matter what. I typically hover around like 172 on a, on a general day. So I'm still taking 172 steps a minute, but my foot's barely kind of kicking back behind me because I'm running slower. When I take the golden retriever puppy that I have here in America out for a run, I'm still taking 172 steps a minute, but now I'm pushing back harder to do it. So your cadence is your cadence, no matter your speed. Just when we're running with good form, all the motion is behind us rather than in front of us.
Point number four, everybody, and our final point is lean. Now, I want you to think of lean as essentially a gas pedal. When we're not running, we are upright, like this. When we're running, you should have a slight lean forward, just like this. So when we talk about lean, I want you to think of lean, leaning from your ankles. It's not your hips. I don't want, no one wants you out here running like this. And if you see something like that, you automatically know in your head, like this is inefficient form, right? So when we talk about lean, we're talking about leaning from the ankles. The best way to demonstrate that is as follows. We're gonna reset our posture again. I'm gonna drill that into you until the cows come home. We're gonna stand on our, um, on our feet evenly, so evenly distributed weight again. Now, if we're upright like this, I want you to roll backwards onto your heel and feel that weight shift. So all of a sudden we're like a, a tree in the wind. We're leaning back. And then we're gonna slowly lean forward. Okay, we're gonna keep doing that over and over again, but we're gonna keep our feet flat on the ground, right? So our toes aren't kicking up, our heel isn't kicking up, just swaying back and forth like trees in the wind. You should feel your toes kind of clench up the front to stop you from falling, okay? This is what lean looks like. When we're in motion, when we're running with good form, our lean is gonna be just slightly forward like this, okay? My spine should still be straight, I should still be a straight line, it's just tilted, all right? When we do this, here's the best way to sum everything up into one point. Good form running in this motion. Are we ready? We're gonna roll backward on our heels. We're gonna lean forward, clench, 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 clench our toes until your toes just can't hold you anymore. And you're gonna let gravity pull you forward. You're not gonna fall and hit anything. Your, your body will catch you and that is the point. That's the point of the entire thing. When we lean forward like this, we're letting gravity pull us closer to the ground. And when we land, you should do this at home. If we now look down, our nose, our knee, and the middle of your foot should all be lined up. This is our, the middle of our, our stride right here. So essentially, all we're doing every single time we go out to run is we're falling, catching ourselves. Falling, catching ourselves, falling, catching ourselves over and over again. If we do that at a quick enough cadence, like we talked about, then it's gonna land right here, right underneath us, underneath our center of gravity, on a bent knee. The only motion is behind, and by that, we can reduce injury drastically. Most people do, they can nail this good form. You become more efficient, you can run longer, faster, whatever your running goals are, if you can compile these things together. The last thing I'll say before we close up is that no one expects you to go out tomorrow and remember all of these things at all, Find out which is your weakest point. If you take much too low of a cadence, you gotta dial that up. If you're prone to stooping over, work on pulling those shoulders back and tilting that pelvis back. If you're prone to landing on your heel like this, kick up the cadence so that your body has more time or less time to land right underneath. Um, and if you lean back, focus on leaning forward just a little bit more. Figure out your weak point and drill it. Once you've nailed that, drill the next one. It takes time, it takes a long time, but that's what we're here for. If you have any questions at all, please give us a call. Any of us are happy to talk to you about this. And practice makes perfect, don't give up on yourself.